Good afternoon and welcome to a special Thanksgiving edition of The Angry Astronaut. And let me tell you, have some incredible news for you today. It appears that New Glenn may be an operational rocket. That is to say, a rocket that customers will be willing to put their payloads on before Starship can become operational. This is an incredible turn of events, something I definitely didn't expect from Blue Origin. And if they can indeed pull this off, it will change the framework of competitive space flight forever. And so to commemorate this special moment, I have a Blue Origin exclusive introduction for you. Check it out. So what do you think? Huh? Come on. If that's not step-by-step -step ferociously, I don't know what is. Hope you guys enjoyed that. So, yeah, <laughs> SpaceX fans may have been ready to try to hunt me down and string me up after all the stuff I started to say at the beginning of this episode. Let's talk about what I really think. Even though this is a an incredible moment, no question in terms of what Blue Origin may be able to accomplish in 2024, you're really going to have to show me something, Jeff, before I'm going to get really all that excited about it. Step by step, ferociously, has delivered so little over the years. I mean, New Shepard works pretty well and yet hasn't really accomplished anything meaningful. It's just been exclusively a space tourism rocket. The only scientific mission that it carried out failed and they haven't done anything new with it since that failure took place. However, NASA seems to be showing enough confidence in what Blue Origin is doing, enough confidence in what they have seen with New Glenn to actually schedule a payload on this rocket. This is something that's scheduled for a little, about third quarter 2024, approximately, depending on when the rocket actually emerges and starts carrying out some tests. If Blue Origin and their step-by-step -step ferociously approach can actually produce a successful launch on the first time and if they can actually land and recover the booster the first time well yeah Blue Origin will take a massive leap forward ahead of SpaceX because I really doubt that Starship is going to be an operational mature system by third quarter of 2024. I think that they'll still be working on trying to get through reusability at that point. They will have, of course, reached orbit, I hope, by that time frame. But in terms of reusing Super Heavy, in terms of getting the rocket to a reliable enough status to wear outside customers, we're not talking about Starlink here, we're talking about non-SpaceX customers are actually willing to put payloads on it, well, I think it's probably going to be either the end of 2024, maybe even 2025, before Starship is in that position. Whereas if New Glenn can actually get going before the end of 2024 as a fully mature and reusable system, that will change everything for Blue Origin. But they're going to get one shot at that. And if it doesn't succeed, it's going to be a long time before they're going to take another shot at it simply because of the way Blue Origin has always done things. So what do I mean when I say step-by-step step ferociously? Well, in Latin, it's gradatim ferociter, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but in any event, this is the principle upon which Blue Origin has been founded. The idea of doing things slowly, carefully, methodically, so that you do them right the first time. And that's what they intend to do with New Glenn, although this has delayed the advent of this important rocket for years. New Glenn was supposed to emerge in 2020. Obviously, we're nearly at 2024, and most probably will be the summer of 2024 before we see the maiden flight of this rocket. And I'll tell you something, I will actually be very impressed if they managed to pull that off by the summer of 2024, given how long it's taken Blue Origin to get things done. 
This has put the company way behind their competition in every important respect, even though they keep securing contracts because everybody is terrified of Jeff Bezos' extremely powerful and well-paid legal team. But why is New Glenn so important? Well, reusability is the obvious first advantage that this rocket has, and even though Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy also have reusability, New Glenn has another other particular advantage that makes this reusable rocket substantially better than either of those options, and that is simply fairing size. For all of their payload capability, especially Falcon Heavy's payload capability, the size of Falcon 9's fairing, which by the way is also the fairing size for Falcon Heavy, has held that rocket back in terms of the types of payloads that it can carry up. Very large payloads that can only fit inside of 5 meter fairings have a difficult time fitting inside Falcon Heavy's fairing, and it's a lot more challenging if you're talking about anything bigger than that. And of course, also, Falcon Heavy's fairing is just short, a snub-nosed fairing which is only going to improve once they get an extended fairing completed for the rocket, which is still months if not years away. We've had no updates whatsoever about an extended fairing for Falcon Heavy simply because Elon Musk doesn't want to keep using Falcon Heavy. He wants to use Starship and he doesn't want to invest time and money in an extended fairing for a rocket that in his opinion will be outdated very soon. Now another advantage that New Glenn theoretically has is the propellant choice that it uses for its second stage. It utilizes Hydrolox instead of Methalox, powering two BE3U engines. Why is that an advantage? Because methane is extremely hard to come by in space, especially on the moon, whereas Hydrolox is a lot easier to manufacture in situ. Therefore, the upper stage of New Glenn is substantially more more flexible, at least in theory, than Starship is going to be, particularly if you're talking about the moon. Starship is a hell of a lot better for Mars, where methane is far more plentiful, but not all that great for the moon, which again gives New Glenn a theoretical advantage. An advantage that's only going to matter if this rocket actually enters service sometime soon. And by the way, you're watching some of their experimentation that they've been doing with a reusable upper stage for New Glenn as well, and this is known as Project Jarvis. However, we don't see any evidence to suggest that this particular project is nearing completion or is going to be serviceable in any kind of reasonable time frame. So let me be clear about one thing. I actually really want to see New Glenn succeed. They're going to need New Glenn in order to deploy the Orbital Reef Space Station, for example. On on top of that, Blue Origin, for better or worse, is now our only backup to Starship, or Lunar Starship that is, for a mission to the moon. The more we hear about Starship and the vast number of refueling launches it's going to require in order to get a crew to the surface of the moon, the more it seems like we might need another alternative, although frankly, I don't see how Blue Origin is going to be able to become a viable alternative alternative any time this decade. However, the first important step of making Blue Moon a viable HLS system is to get New Glenn into service. So I definitely want to see that happen, but here's why it's not going to happen if they aren't successful on the first try. Check out the developmental history of New Shepard and you're going to see what I'm talking about. April 29th, 2015, the maiden launch of New Shepard and the capsule returned to Earth safely. The booster did not, but they weren't trying to retrieve the booster. And then on November 23rd of the first year, the booster returned to Earth safely as well. And yet it would be another six years before they would risk human beings on this rocket. During this time frame, Blue Origin carried out a variety of other tests as well. For example, the crew 
crew escape system. That was tested in 2012, more than a decade ago, and it worked just fine, by the way. And then in a follow-up mission in 2016, they blew the rocket up intentionally in order to check what the crew escape system would do under those circumstances. 2017, 2018, more test flights, but no human crew. Indeed, it would be all the way to July of 2021 before Jeff Bezos, his brother Mark, Wally Funk, and Oliver Damien would actually risk going on this rocket. Not necessarily because it wasn't safe up to that point, but because Blue Origin is so incredibly cautious. Now let me tell you something. It's not bad to be cautious. I advocate caution a great deal when I'm talking about Starship, but this is cautious on hard mode. Think about this for a moment. Up to September of last year, Blue Origin successfully landed New Shepard every time they actually tried to. No failures, no flaws, perfect performance every single time. You're talking about testing every component to failure, testing and retesting, simulating and re-simulating before you actually fly. And if anything actually does go wrong, as happened in September of last year, well, then things are going to take a long time before Blue Origin is going to risk another launch. Fortunately, there were no people on this spacecraft and the flight termination system or the abort system rather worked perfectly well. The capsule escaped from the explosion under tremendous amounts of g-forces by the way but still it can be assumed that any human passengers on this version of New Shepard probably would have survived just fine had they been there when the explosion took place and yet Blue Origin is showing no signs of launching New Shepard again and again this is because of an abundance of caution. They really don't seem to do very well with failure. And when they do have a failure, they really take every possible step to make sure that that failure is not repeated in the future or any other kind of failure for that matter. And this is why I say that New Glenn absolutely needs to succeed on its first time. By the way, the payload that NASA is putting on New Glenn is the Escapade. A pair of small satellites, approximately 90 kilograms apiece, on their way to Mars to study its strange magnetic field. Now, Mars does not have a planetary magnetic field, but it does have localized magnetic fields, which exist for reasons that we can't quite figure out yet. The job of these satellites is to study those magnetic fields and how they interact with the solar wind. A pretty important mission, by the way, and one that Blue Origin is very lucky to get. A bit overpowered, in my opinion, New Glenn delivering a couple of satellites weighing less than a total of 200 kilograms, but nevertheless, it will give Jeff Bezos the bragging rights of reaching Mars before Elon Musk does. Although, in my opinion, that's a pretty empty triumph given the fact that Elon Musk will have launched a mission to the asteroid belt before Jeff Bezos, and that is a much more ambitious mission to the 16 Psyche asteroid. Nevertheless, if it goes off without a hitch, that means the New Glenn will be an operational rocket capable of many things that its competitors are not. But once again, you gotta show me something in order to convince me that all of this is possible. And thus far, Blue Origin has shown us very little except how slow they can work. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Space Apache, for becoming my latest Patreon supporter. Really appreciate your help. If you'd like to join him and to join the Angry Advocate community, well, check the description for all the details. Please like, please subscribe. It's so important to the success of my channel, and as always, stay angry about space.